Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Pearls of Wisdom on Nirmal Bang with me Avan Dabash. Happiest Minds that's the company that we're talking about today. It is a digital transformation IT consulting and services company that focuses on all the big buzzwords of the day. Big data, analytics, cloud, mobility and security for better businesses. And joining in to decode the business, their financials, their growth roadmap, and of course, the levers for growth down the line is going to be Mr. Venkat Raman Narayanan, who is the MD and CFO at Happiest Minds Technology. Thank you so much for taking time out and joining in. And I want to just start off by talking about the very optimistic projections that you guys have uh, with respect to the goal of a billion dollars by FY31. Um, just tell us what really is going to lead to that. It's going to be a lot of focus on new generative AI business unit, really, and the success of your acquisition. That's right. Thanks for having us on the show, Amam. And uh, yes, we have uh, we have laid out a plan to be a billion dollar enterprise by 2031. And if you look at how to reach that from where we are today, it would be about a growth of between 21 to 22 percent Kega. Uh, that's the kind of growth that we have to do to reach that, uh, you know, aspirational number and target that we have set up for ourselves. Uh, this will be done through a combination of, you know, organic and inorganic growth. Uh, right now, uh, FI24, we ended with about $196 million. Uh, if you look at how we are progressing for FI25, uh, we, we have acquired two companies and including that we are on on a good growth and we have actually set out a ambitious target for ourselves to at least grow by between 30 to 35 percent on top line for fi 25 so you know it takes us to a 250 260 million kind of a number and a, a good run rate for fi 26. Uh, so that's the target for us and we are hoping to grow that through going deeper into our existing set of customers, grow our existing customers, plan to, you know, upsell and cross sell into the various customers that we get through these acquisitions. And that's the strategy for us to become a billion dollar enterprise. Okay, that sounds very promising. So let's delve into the revenue growth, uh, at least in and the kind of performance that you have seen as well, um, because that's largely been led by and large by the edutech vertical and then healthcare as well has been very promising with a solid double digit growth what are going to be some of the verticals that will lead your revenue growth down the line uh, if you look at our numbers for the first quarter that just ended we have edutech still being the largest vertical followed by you know healthcare and bfsi that's because the two acquisitions that we did of uh, pure software and aureus are focused on these two verticals so pure software is almost 50 percent BFSI, 30% healthcare and 20% high tech. Aureus is almost, you know, 70 to 80% uh, BFSI and about 20% is high tech and healthcare. So it, it, these, both of these acquisitions go nicely along with the kind of vertical focus we have. EduTech has been our, uh, you know, traditional strong area. Macmillan was uh, an account that we acquired earlier this year so that's also growing and along with pure software and uh, aureus you know we'll have three key verticals which is edutech which would be about 20 percent bfsi which should be about near about 20 percent and uh, healthcare should be about 17 to 18 percent high tech industrial manufacturing would be the other two verticals along with retail and uh, cpg which which are growing organically right now quite well uh, and that that's the ones which will take us into you know uh, the future of fi25 and onwards okay fair enough um let's get in a sense as well in terms of your operational performance because in the quarter gone by um it was the acquisition um or the consolidation rather of pure soft and aureus and uh, that really um was uh, you know weaved into the numbers which is why probably the margins fell short of expectations what is it that you're working with when it comes to your overall uh, operational performance down the line? So if you look at my operational performance, EBITDA has been about 23.9% this quarter. So let, uh, that, that takes off, you know, quite a bit of noise that comes because of acquisitions. There were certain write backs last quarter. This quarter, we have certain expenses on acquisition and so on and so forth. But, you know, shown off that if you look at just the gross margin, sorry, EBITDA, we, have, we were about 24.1% last quarter. 
we are at about 23.9 percent this quarter uh what i have held out is with the acquisitions and the way uh, things are progressing we are kind of forecasting i'm not using the word guidance here but we are forecasting a uh, EBITDA number of between 20 to 22 percent for the year with a top line growth again a forecast of between 30 to 35 percent now 20 to 22 percent you know takes into account a few things one is the investments that we have to do in the acquisitions that we have made because you know you have to do cross sell upsell and all of this will cost you money the second most important thing is our utilization currently is at about 75 76 percent while it's a good lever to have we have also to take the costs during this phase of you know consolidation and we have to move that uh, needle up to 78 and up to get that margin up the third thing is generative ai was a new bu that we started uh, this year and we have started you know reporting it as a separate uh, bu in our financials uh, we have reported a top line of about 900 855 to 900 thousand dollars but it also has seen an investment of a close to about million million and a half this this quarter so you know that's an investment that we will have to make during the current year so that this uh, bu stands on its own feet and is a growth engine for us going forward so there is quite a bit of investment happening in in organic growth in new capabilities in the new uh, bu that we have uh, we have uh, you know set up that those are the things which will you know have a pull or a drag i would say on the EBITDA. but at the same time we have got the levers of uh, utilization we have got the levers of growth and we have got the levers of consolidation benefits coming in to help you move your margins with with both puts and takes we are saying that we'll be about 20 between the 20 and 22 percent mark as far as EBITDA for the year is concerned all right uh, good to know that those are the kind of numbers that you're looking at um what about the headcount how has that been uh, it has increased quite significantly in the first quarter as well uh do you would you say that the growth in your employee numbers have come largely from acquisitions and that's how it will likely scale up uh, both uh, organic and inorganic, we have seen growth. If you look at the organic growth, it's about 100 plus mix of laterals and campus joiners. Yes, last quarter, because, you know, when an acquisition happens, you just add. Now, both all the three businesses, uh, which is Happiest Minds, Pure Software and Aureus are growing and we are hiring. So here onwards, well, the growth that we hope to show will have, you know, um, will show up in the numbers that we look to hire. And we are hopeful of uh, crossing the 7,000 number during the year. Okay. Uh, getting a sense then as well as to what the estimate is when it comes to your inorganic uh, revenue um, and, uh, you know, what the division really is going to be between organic and inorganic revenue growth. I have kind of stayed away from giving that because, you know, it's quite complex it's quite complex yeah. how do you split what is organic and organic mm -hmm. uh, we we were in touch with pure software aureus from the beginning of this quarter quite a bit of cross sell has happened the third acquisition that you uh, saw of macmillan was essentially an organic uh, you know uh, growth it, it was just positioned or structured as an acquisition but otherwise it was an acquisition of a client and taking over their existing gcc or offshore location into our fold which is which is organic so if you put all that together i'm really in a bind as to say what is organic what is inorganic because there's quite a bit of upsell and cross sell starting to happen between the companies that we have acquired and that's already showing on the numbers that we have okay fair enough clear, clear from that i just wanted to understand um you know there are these risks of course for the business as a whole um, you know, that there could be a delay in the incorporation of acquired entities onto the main company. Is that something that you're worried about or it's smooth sailing? Oh, yes. Integration risk is a definite risk for any acquisition. Uh, yeah. Smaller the company, you know, we, we are able to manage it with much more uh, mitigating um, um, setups or, or, or um, mitigation steps that we take. But the larger the company, it, it takes a little while to get because it's finally we are people business it's all about people people the way they interact and you know while there are a lot of things that can go positively there also can be you know, misunderstanding and all of that but we need to work through all of that uh, at the highest levels at the leadership level there is complete meeting of minds uh, 
the the focus is to grow the focus is to be profitable the pro- focus is to make sure that you know the uh, one plus one is actually two and a half in the minimum or three at least okay let's understand how the each of the geographies as well are likely to fare the americas europe as well as the rest of the world uh, america has been traditionally our you know strong strong geography um, and as as you know um, it has its points pluses and some some sort of minuses as well because at at 68% uh, it's it's a it's a reasonably large exposure for us any weakness or any sort of you know talks about economic uh, conditions or macroeconomic microeconomic whatever you call in the geography can have certain you know uh, spin off and overall effect on us but uh, that aside uh, europe India and APAC have been um, geographies which have been doing well, doing growing well for us. Especially India as a geography, we, if you look at all the uh, similar sized IT companies as, or companies or even the large ones, you will be surprised to note that we have a significant presence in India. And here, while I should say there is a lot of work to be done, it's not at margins which are any different from maybe uh, an APAC geography or for that matter. Australia or, uh, or the, 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 the Middle East. Uh, it's similar size kind of pricing that we get in uh, India. So India is going well. Europe is kind of stable. US is, you know, uh, has been kind of slow in the past, but we are hoping that to change uh, as we look into the future quarters. Because, you know, there is only so much, so much of time you can stay away from not making a technology investment or, you know, defer it. Uh, just like what you saw in the times of COVID, during times of COVID, people just shut shop or they just decided to sit uh, on any new investments. But then when COVID starts to recede, started to recede, you saw this huge uh, deluge of uh, work in favor of IT companies, especially the digital light, digital focused IT companies. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting something similar, but it may not be a deluge, but it, it is going to be a lot more of capital formation that will happen when things open up. Okay, uh, good to know. And, um, you know, you guys are obviously at the forefront of everything that's happening in the technological world. It's at the tip of your fingers. There was also the launch of Complete 360 IT managed uh, service offering that was Watch 360. Tell us a little bit more about that and how you guys are really leveraging technology to further grow your business. So, uh, the Complete Watch uh, 360 degrees that we launched is it's a, it's a security platform. Um, we have a very strong security business. You know, we are a full service uh, digital IT services provider. So to that extent, we have got uh, we have got capabilities in the fields of analytics, automation, IoT, uh, security, infrastructure management and platform development and, uh, you know, bioinformatics, which is a new area that we are making investments into. And now most recently, you know, in generative AI. So quite a bit of working work happening across multiple new technologies. Uh, part of the security offering is what this this platform or this tool or the security watch product that we talked about or it's it's a service offering where we are talking about uh, remote infrastructure and security services offering of ours uh, it, it it blends in very well with the IMSS business of ours you know IMSS constitutes about close to 18 percent of our total revenues out of the 18 percent half of it close to nine to ten percent comes from security services and specialized security offerings this is a platform which nicely enmeshes <coughs> or is part of the security offerings that we give to our clients around. All right. And uh, what about, um, you know, the kind of impetus and uh, that you can see from inorganic growth in FY25 via your three acquisitions, PureSoft, Oreos and Macmillan? The, all the three acquisitions are going to contribute significantly into our growth. Um, and they're going to go along with the organic growth that we have set up for, set up for ourselves. So there is, uh, I would say organic growth is good. Uh, while I don't want to differentiate between organic and inorganic and the acquired businesses are also growing well. So that that's what, you know, sets the platform for FI26. As for future acquisitions, uh, we did cover that, you know, integration risk is there. We need to mitigate that. We need to make sure that uh, all said, uh, the companies that we have acquired part uh, become truly part of Happiest Minds family and they, they enmesh themselves into the culture and the company very well fit in. And then we, we go to uh, customers 
as happiest minds or a pure software a happiest minds company or yes a happiest minds company with with the sole intention of growing business for all of us okay and um, you know you have spoken in the past as well about how your overall growth rate you're seeing the shift towards more consumer oriented economy and that is going to create a huge opportunity for you can you elaborate a little bit more on that that comment was you know more related to the retail cpg vertical that we have uh, you know retail and cpg is a strong vertical we have got uh, certain nice offerings in that space be it analytics predictive analytics uh, pimco related solutions and the like so th- that's something that uh, is is a is a vertical that's doing pretty well uh, we had an acquisition in that about 3 uh, 4 years 3 years back and that's nicely enmeshed in itself and has really been uh, you know in the forefront of taking us into new customers and opening up doors for us so you know retail cpg is the one which is really going to uh, uh, get the upside of any of the uh, changes that are going to happen in the consumer behavior moreover consumer behavior is a large part, part of the economy uh, or the economic spend in in america america being the largest uh, economy for us it drives all business so whether it is industrial manufacturing bfsi healthcare all of them get affected uh, at a macro level from uh, consumer spend if i'm right if my numbers are right close to 80% of the us economy is driven by consumer spend okay and finally i just wanted to understand from you given that you're really at the forefront of all that's happening technologically and we have seen as well a lot of focus from the government on this do you have any pearls of wisdom being at the helm of such uh, a company as the md and the cfo any advice to people who are really looking at technology or building up their ai skills and things like that don't want to sound to sell see out here but if you really want to uh, you know <laughs> digitize yourself i i think uh, uh, come to a specialized company like happiest minds but uh, that's the sales pitch aside but the second <laughs> thing is you know there is a stock about micro and macro economic issues and how the entire industry and the it landscape has been affected but like i said earlier during our conversation you know uh, people can't stay away from technology investments for too long because today technology is the business can you yeah. uh, i'm just just saying is amazon a retail company or a tech company the base yeah. of it uh, you, you you can't you know uh, take one away from the others they're so integral they are no longer tech is no longer a staff function so it's not you are offshoring something which is uh, not key to you or which is something which can be done better by somebody but you are offshoring your you know core of the business and so you need great partners to make sure that they understand your business and work very closely with you so yeah. the talks of you know when the consolidation because you know the big will get bigger the small will die all of that i think uh, don't stand merit this is my my you know you can call it pearls of wisdom or my my thought yeah. there is people are looking for good partners in the area of yeah. technology who can add value for them and uh, if you stand out in that crowd trust me you have got a great business to build in the long term and so to the short and the medium term tech is where it's at and you're right on top there thank you so very much for taking time out and joining in pleasure chatting with you thank you very much bye bye subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss an update from nirmal bang